Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Voss Talks and today we're going to be talking about 10 beginner mistakes that content creators make on social media. So if you're interested in seeing that, if you're interested in avoiding these mistakes so you don't make them, continue watching this video, roll the intro. <laughs> So before we get into this, let's do the question of the day. And the question of the day is, what is your biggest weakness when it comes to creating content on social media? I'm interested to hear what you guys are struggling with. Is it actually creating the content? Is it editing the content? Is it scheduling the content? Or is it actually just posting the content? Let me know what your biggest weakness is regarding creating content on social media. So let's get into these 10 tips, these 10 beginner mistakes, and they're not in any order. So just because I say one thing first doesn't mean that the other ones are more important. I actually saved the best ones for last, so make sure you stick around until the end. Let's get into number one, which is over filtering and oversaturating your posts. These posts that you're making on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you're posting these uh, pictures or videos, you don't want them to be oversaturated and over filtered. Obviously, you could you could mess with the you could mess with the editing a little bit. But something that I always say whenever I talk to people about photo editing, I always say less is more because if you use less saturation rather than bumping up that saturation all the way and it looks like oh my god, where was this person like on Mars or something when they took the picture? And it's like super saturated. I've definitely done that, so that's why I'm saying that because looking back on those pictures. I'm like, that's a little embarrassing. <laughs> so as a tip that you can avoid, stick with that motto, less is more. Less saturation, less color bumping, less uh, like different edits that you could do, less is more. So try to stay to the authentic picture as much as possible. But with that being said, definitely don't be scared to be creative. That leads us into number two, which is some people post the same picture all the time. It's like, I see the same exact picture posted by some people all the time. Like every day is a new post, but it's the same picture basically. Maybe different clothes, maybe like a different smile or different like pose maybe, but it's always like the same background. I don't know, like I'm just not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of seeing the same type of post every single day. I like to see different stuff. So try to be creative and try to get different angles, get different shots around your house. Like uh, maybe like include different people in your posts. Just make each post as different as possible because when you're posting the same thing over and over and over again, it definitely makes your followers kind of get bored of that and they might mute your posts, which would suck or they might just unfollow you. So number three, this is just my opinion, but I don't like seeing collages on my newsfeed on Instagram. When I'm scrolling through and I see a, a collage, I just keep scrolling because if I see a collage, it's like I see all these different photos and I, I just don't really see it as very professional at all and I, I just don't stop and look at those. I would just recommend just don't do it because I feel like it confuses your audience. Like which of these photos am I supposed to be looking at right now and why are they all together? If you have like a good reason if like, you know, you have like a good friend, it's like his birthday or something or her birthday and you know, you wanna like make a collage of all of your experiences together, all right, that's, that's one thing. But if you're just posting like, every day a collage just like of your workout or like of your life where you're just like throughout your day and you post a collage within the same picture don't do that because you just want to focus on one making one good piece of content for your audience each day at least at least one to three but you don't want to be posting three images within the one image so like you got one image and then you got one two three pictures in the one image you don't want to do that that's called a collage it just confuses your audience, so just don't do that. Collages don't make people stop scrolling the feed to you know, check out what the post is about. We, the goal with these posts are to make people stop and be like, wow, that's a great picture, and then draw them into our captions so that way they'll read about whatever we have going on, our event, whatever inspiration we have for them. We want them to actually read our caption below the picture, so the picture is basically just to get them to stop, and collages do not make that happen. So if you've enjoyed this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you screenshotted this this screen right here screenshot it post it in your Instagram stories and then tag me and when you tag me I will reshare it on my profile so that way my fans and my followers can follow you as well so that leads us into number four which is having too many words on your pictures so you might see my content and you see the I post uh, like quotes on my on pictures so that's like a trend that I have in my profile I post quotes 
And in all the quotes, those quotes are chosen very strategically. I try not to use too many words, but I see some people who have like, it's like a picture and then on the whole left side of the picture, it'll just be like all of this text in the picture. And that is what Instagram does not like. It likes being a visual platform. And when you have a bunch of text in the picture, it actually can see, it knows that it has algorithms to be able to tell that. And it will actually limit your exposure because you have so much text on the image because people don't want to see that. They want to see a good engaging picture, like a good solid picture, not a bunch of caption in the picture. You want to keep the caption in the caption, not on the content on the picture. All right, and number five is having proper lighting in your photos. So we need clear photos. We need the best photos that we could possibly be posting. And the best way to do that is to have good, solid lighting. When you have good lighting, it's basically ensured that you're not gonna have a pixelated photo. And that is like the enemy that we're trying to avoid right here. We do not want pixelated content because pixelated content has zero chance of going viral. People are not gonna be like, damn, this pixelated selfie this person just took that's like kind of dark and can barely see their face. Damn, I'm gonna share this with all my friends and double tap and I'm gonna comment. And yeah, people aren't gonna do that because it's not quality content. But if they see like a, a high quality picture of, you know, like you setting up a camera over there and you taking a picture of yourself and it's high quality, looks good, it's not pixelated, good lighting, then that's share worthy. So yeah, make sure that you have good, lighting in all of your photos. And one way to ensure that you always have good lighting is either using natural light, which is a great light source, using outside light just from the sun, but a second great way if you if it's dark out, if it's nighttime, is actually using like one of these that I have right here. It's like five bucks, it's just like a little light, and it was literally like, I think it was like five to 10 bucks on Amazon. And I actually will link it below because it's only five, 10 bucks. And it seriously brings like your photo game from like here to up here, especially if you're ever in a search situation where it's a little bit dark in the room and you don't have a light, that thing is perfect. And number six beginner mistake is shooting every single day and posting that content every day instead of scheduling the content and batch shooting. So batch shooting is when you plan out your, your shoots and you get a ton of content in one day and then you schedule all of that in one day so that way your whole month of content is just planned, ready to go, there's no stressing out, there's no on the fly stuff every single day. Instead of doing that, it's all handled in one day and it just auto goes out. You don't even have to double think about double think about it. You don't even have to think about it again. And that is amazing. That's a great way to increase your productivity. So that way you can focus on maybe more important things or just other things in your business. And in the last video that I posted, I actually showed you exactly how to schedule content on Instagram. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, Go right here, it teaches you exactly how to schedule the content step by step. And number seven, we kind of already covered this, but no selfies. Maybe like once in a great while, but don't post a bunch of selfies. Those are not professional content. It's not gonna attract your target audience. Instead of doing selfies, either ask someone in your family or a friend or a neighbor or anyone to just take a few good shots of you, get some different angles, which we'll talk about in a minute but just have something, some way of getting your picture besides doing a selfie. You could get a little tripod. I actually have this camera sitting on like a tripod like this big right now, super tiny, it's like four inches big. And you could just get one of those and just turn on the self timer on either your camera or your phone camera and just go make a pose in front of it. And then when it starts, you know, the timer goes down, it starts taking pictures and then you do like different poses, like each time it takes a new picture. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's a great way to get your own content without having to hire like a super expensive photographer, but then you're still getting good content, not just selfies. And if you didn't want to use like the self timer, you could also just get like a little remote that you could connect Bluetooth to your phone or your camera. And then whenever, when you're ready, like you got your pose down and everything, you just click the button and then it takes a picture of you. And that's great too. That's just a different way of doing it. I just use a self timer or my, actually nowadays my phone can connect to my DSLR camera. So I just connect my phone to the Canon app and then I could see the what my camera sees on my app and then once I like what I see I tap it it still does a it still does a countdown like 10 seconds so I could put my phone away so I don't have my phone in like every single picture I take so I could just put it in my pocket like get my pose ready like whatever I'm thinking about doing and yeah that's how I 
to take all of my photos. And that leads us into number eight, which is actually creating a photo briefing. So like a photo shoot brief. And that means you actually plan out exactly what photos you wanna take, what pictures you wanna go for what events. So let's say you have like a certain event going on, it's like about business. You wanna create a vibe that attracts like business people. So maybe you're wearing like a suit or like a nice dress if you're a girl or like, you know, just you're, you're dressed nice and other days, if you're trying to portray like a more chill, relaxed vibe, you just post like a photo of you wearing, you know, like just lounge around clothes, but you have like a different pose. You're at home, you're just chilling. Like you, you gotta think about the background, what kind of picture you wanna be posting each week with going with each event, each discount, each product launch, etc. So that's called a brief. You create the plan of exactly each shoot of each photo that you want. So let's say you want to shoot in the coffee shop one day, you want to be in a, like your house another day, you want to be like a, at a different angle another day with like a different outfit on. You just got to create a full document of exactly each shoot that you want to do so that way you know that you have every single photo that you want and that's exactly what I do. I create this, I just write it all down on a piece of paper, what kind of angle, and I go actually on Pinterest and I look for pose, uh, like inspiration, because I'm not very good at posing myself. So I just look at what other people, how other people are posing, and I'll just kind of, you know, do my own thing, but you know, just keep their, what their poses in mind. And it also helps with different angles, different backgrounds, different props. You're gonna wanna write all of this down that you want in each photo, so that way you just don't have to stress about it in the moment of taking the photo. Instead of being like, oh my God, like I don't know what to pose, I don't know how to pose, I don't know what props I wanna use, I don't know what background I should do. Instead, it's all planned out ahead of time, so you just look at the sheet and you're just like, all right, so I gotta do this next, and you just go do it, instead of being like, oh no, like what if this doesn't look right? Like should I have this in here or not? No, it's already planned ahead and that's called briefing your photo shoots. And number nine is getting the right angle, getting different angles and this is very important because some people they just, you know, they just hold up the camera and they're just like, all right, got a picture. And no, you, that, that is the worst thing you could do. First of all, up high is not a good angle. You always wanna start low. You wanna get the angle low, so I usually always shoot from the waist. That's like a common photographer thing. You just shoot from the waist, and I'm, by the way, I'm not a photographer. I wouldn't consider myself a photographer. I do know a lot about photography, but I wouldn't consider myself a photographer. But always get low. Being low gives you a better perspective. It makes the world just look kind of bigger in the photo. You're like kind of looking up. It's not like you're looking down on a person when you just like hold it up like right here, and you're just like, oh, uh, all right, I got it, I got it. That's, those, those pictures are never good. And another reason why you wanna get the angles is first of all, you wanna get the best angle as possible because you wanna post the best picture you can for your audience. So that way they stop scrolling the feed and actually read your caption along with your photo. But you want options. So let's say you think that one angle of like, damn, that's a good angle, but then you, you know, you check out just a little bit lower, maybe like to the right, to the left. Instead of like only getting that one angle, now you have options. So if you, yeah, you like that first one, but damn, that second one and that third one, those were some good angles too. So that way you have just options to use. And 10, this is just a huge pet peeve of mine is when people don't straighten their photos. And you may have seen this in my previous video that I just released about scheduling your content on Instagram using Later. And the, the picture that I uploaded into Later, it was super crooked and it did not look like anything I would usually post. I'm sure some of you guys were like, what is that? And yeah, that's what I mean. When something, here it is right here. When a post is just like, when a picture is just like completely crooked, so you gotta like tilt your head or tilt your phone and be like, or like why why didn't this person just take it and just flip or why was his phone so crooked definitely always straighten your your photos make sure that it's as straight as possible so that way people aren't like hey like all right this guy just posted a this girl this guy just posted a sideways picture so i have to like you know turn my head and look nobody's gonna stop scrolling for that and nobody's gonna double tap that so definitely always straighten your photos so that way it's level you're not having to tilt your head because look at the difference here so right here let me just scoot over a little bit right here we got the 
non-straightened one and then right here we got the straightened one it looks so much better straightened rather than not straightened all right guys i appreciate you guys watching until the end of this video so here's actually a bonus for you so i use lightroom to edit my photos and i know some of you guys do as well and you guys were asking me if i have any presets that you guys can use and yes i'll just give you guys the preset that i use in all of my photos so the link for that is below it's my preset that i use on all of my photos so if you want to download that and you know have your photos photos look kind of like how mine do, click the link below and you could download that preset. But you do need Lightroom, I believe, in order to use that preset. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, make sure you leave them in the comments below. If you want to see more content like this in the future, subscribe. And when you do subscribe, make sure you hit that bell so that way you'll be notified every time we release a new video. So with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.